representing real world situations with math is one of the most powerful uses of math. So we run across things in our daily lives and then we write formulas or math expressions to represent them. And that's what we're going to be doing right now. So our first situation, we see that Sylvia can load six boxes per minute onto a truck. Write an expression for the number of boxes she can load in m minutes. m is the variable representing some unknown number of minutes. Six boxes per minute, well, this is a grouping situation and this definitely begs to, to be used with multiplication. So six boxes per minute, it looks like for each minute, six boxes for each minute means we'll be multiplying six by m. So let's just think this through and see if it makes sense. In one minute, she would load six boxes. In two minutes, six times two is 12, she would load 12 boxes. In three minutes, 18 boxes. So the number of minutes multiplied by the number of boxes per minute will give us the total number of boxes she loads in that number of minutes. Great. All right, let's take a look at another situation. Jason has 12 fewer books than Carlos, who has B books, B being the number of books, once again a variable. Write an expression for the number of books Jason has. Well, Jason has 12 fewer than Carlos, so if we know how many Carlos has, we would then subtract, because fewer implies subtraction, we would subtract 12 from that number. But we don't actually know how many Carlos has, so we use the variable b. So Carlos has b books. Jason has 12 fewer than this, so we will subtract 12 from b. So Carlos has b books, Jason has b minus 12 books, 12 fewer than Carlos. Wonderful. Now if we take a look at our last situation. Lori is four inches taller than Ken. Write an expression for Lori's height. Lori is four inches taller than Ken. Interestingly, this is a little bit different than the previous two situations where I was given a variable. The reality is, in our daily lives, when we're using math to model situations around us, we're very rarely given a variable to use. We have to make one up, pick one. And remember, a variable is simply a letter that we're using to represent an unknown quantity. So the quantity we don't know in this situation is Ken's height. Because Lori is four inches taller than Ken, so I would need to know how tall Ken is to figure out how tall Lori is. So the unknown here is Ken's height. So I'm going to do what's called defining a variable. We define a variable, pick a letter to represent the unknown quantity, and then simply state what it's going to represent. So I'm going to use the letter K as my variable. K will represent Ken's height. And I'm going to add a little piece of information here. I'm going to say in inches. It's useful to specify the units of measurement so we don't get confused whether we're talking about inches or centimeters or feet or whatever. So now I know Ken's height in inches is K. Well, Lori is four inches taller than Ken. So Lori would be Ken's height. Taller implies addition. So Ken's height plus four. So Lori is K plus four inches tall. Wonderful.